kill that urge to be chosen, choose yourself. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Kimmy and I talk about books. I read them sometimes, occasionally, it's a lot of fun. And today we are going to talk about my top book boyfriends. I have over a hundred book boyfriends, so this is just a random selection. Some of them are my favorite though, let's be honest. But this is just a nice little selection of my book boyfriends. We can honestly make this a series. I read way too many books for me to actually pick like a top 10 or top 15 or even a top 50. I'm very serious. I just love all my book boyfriends. I can't wait to get into this video. All of them are just so special to me. They they just, they itch a certain scratch of mine or scratch a certain itch. I realize I was saying that wrong for like the longest. Also, if it's a little windy, um, please ignore it. I tried to use a microphone and it just sounded really like muffled and I did not like it also. I got into crocheting. My cousin made this hat for me and I was like, I need this in like every assortment of every color ever. And then she was like, girl, just make it. And I was like, oh, true. So I did. And so this is the one my cousin made. I made this one, it was so cute. It's a cute little sage green. When I tell you my wrist and hands still kind of hurt, I guess maybe because I haven't like written down in so long. I graduated in August, right? So I I like type a lot now. I don't really, you know, take notes anymore. Um, and so maybe my wrist is not familiar with me using my hands as much anymore. And it was, I was like, uh, ouch. I'm so sorry, she's so cute. And then, and then I made a black one, right? Because I was like, let me, let me, everything looks better in black, like black is just such a good color and this is my black one isn't she cute i might make her a little fluffier because i really like the big fluffy ones because i have one i have one in white um and i don't know i might make it fluffier i did have extra yarn so i was like okay let me just do that anyways that's enough of that let's get into my list we're gonna start this off with Percy Jackson. Now I will admit I am biased and he is absolutely my number one. Disregard what I just said. I actually still regard it though because he sometimes switches places, but he is just everything to me. I don't know, Percy's a classic. Also, I am not talking about the Percy in the book series who is forever 18, according to Rick Riordan. He just doesn't age past 18 in his verse universe. I'm talking about the Percy on AO3, okay? I'm talking about the Percy I've read in those fix or whatever, okay? I'm talking about post-teen Percy, okay? We're not getting into all of that. I'm talking about post-teen Percy. And when I was a kid, obviously like, Teen Percy, but I'm not a child anymore by government law. I'm still a child of the Lord and I'm 17 forever in my mind. Maybe 18. Sometimes, sometimes I'm feeling a little 18. Percy, I don't even know, you know, he's like the most powerful demigod ever. This man gave up immortality to live with a girl and all the gods were like, okay, we can make you a god. He was like, nah. How about you pay attention to your kids? Ate them up, ate them up. I could literally make an entire separate video and I will, I absolutely will. If that's what we wanna get into about Percy Jackson and who he is. We can even dabble into Dark Percy that we saw in House of Hades. Next, we're gonna get into Beach Read, Augustus Everett, or Gus. I love Gus so, so freaking much. He is so pure to me, he is so tender, he has my heart. How can he say phrases like this? And expect me to be fine. Imagine the phrase alone, when I watch you sleep, I get overwhelmed that you exist. I can have that tattooed on my body and no one will ever know but me. And that's all that matters because that phrase alone put him on this list. I'll tell you that much. And he's just so attentive and so in love with January. I, I love reading books where you can really see and feel the love seeping from the pages of the book. And I feel the love every time I read January. And guys, he loves her for who she is, no matter what. No matter what phase, what era she's in, that's his forever and always. And I, I love it. Number three, we have Dominic Alexander from The Stormy by J.L. Seegers. I loved Dominic so much. He's literally always been focused on someone. She's literally always been the girl that got away. And no matter what his circumstance was, he even gave up his happiness so he could see her and his best friend happy. There's a lot in this book. By the way, read it. I am not spoiling it. Eddie boy, a little bit y'all are getting from me, but Dominic, he just, he knows how to attend to her needs and he was always there for her when she needed him. Granted, they did kind of start off as like, 
Oh, he don't like me, so I don't like him. Like, girl, boss up and talk to him. And she did, and it was just, there's something so pure about Dominic. He's been through so much, and, and I believe that he really just had everyone's best intention at heart besides his own. He's a very selfless person. And usually I hate Superman-esque characters who feel like they should carry the weight of the world and think their way is right, and only right. But when it comes to Dominic, he's just that guy. What can I say? I'm not going in particular order, by the way. When I say these numbers, I'm just listing them like how I have them written down because I do have my iPad here with me. But number four on the list is Connor Cobalt from the Addicted slash Callaway Sister series. If you guys know me, you know Connor Cobalt is my man, my man, my man, my man. And I'm a scream it till the end of time. I love him. This man, this man went to Paris, shut down the entire like fashion strip this, with all the luxury stores and everything and bought Rose everything she could have ever dreamed of. Just on a whim, just cause, just cause he could. Just cause he could, cause he's that guy, okay? And Connor is dominant, okay? That I will say, but I'm trying to stay PG on this channel, so that's all you're gonna get out of me. So if you like a little bit of, you know, you know, then I would suggest picking up the book because Connor has some seeds where I'm like, oh my gosh. And then just tell the Corey's a good person. And then I love, because the series is so long, it's 10 books long. Um, and this is just the starter series. There's like so many, there's so many interconnected series with it. It's crazy. And he changes and he grows in front of you. Also, Connor Cobalt in the first Addicted book and Connor Cobalt in the rest of the Addicted books are not the same character. You can literally see where they change. <laughs> they changed who he was to the core. And I love who they changed him to be because who he was in the beginning. Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, I, sorry. Connor is my man, my man, my man. I'm so sorry. I love him so much. And then he says stuff like this and he's like, it's just that guy. Like, why, why would I not love him? Me and Steph's stories, this queen right here, we are like this when it comes to Mr. Cobalt, okay? Okay, we're talking about Ren Bergman. Okay, yes, from Always Only You, the second book in the Bergman Brothers series by Chloe Liza. One thing I really love about this series is the amazing disability rep. Every single book you get to read about characters, at least for me, who I've never met people like this in real life. If people's disabilities aren't visible, it's hard to see like what's going on. And this book explains it to the T. It makes me feel like I know these people. <sighs> Chloe Liza, everybody. Ryan Bergman is the absolute sunshine of the entire series. He's so sweet, he's so happy, he loves his little girl. He's like 6'3", he loves her through it all, and he's just the coolest person in the world, so he belongs very high on my list. Y'all, this next one. Malachi Corriday from Honey and Spice. Y'all, let me tell you something. I love Malachi Down. I am Nigerian. I never shy away from saying it either, look. <laughs> That's why I love this book, okay? There's a lot of Nigerian culture infused in that book. Never in my life, like I have lived a good 22 years on this earth and I've never felt represented in the way of like friend groups and community as I did with that book because I read it while I was in college or after I shortly graduated and it just gave me all the, it just gave me everything. It gave me everything. Malachi is like so many of my guy friends, but like parts of them into one person, like a dream person. He's like the coolest person ever. He has that swagger. He just has that, that charm to him. He's just that guy. And the way he, his banter with Kiki, oh, don't play with me, don't play with me. His banter is everything to me. I am someone who thrives off of good banter. That's how I determine if a relationship is like, is like great banter and he has it. And he's just like this, I like, he got his little beard, he got his little hair, he can dress, and he's a film student. Now y'all know I love a creative. <laughs> I love a creative. I am reading this and I'm like, Malachi. Ah! Oh shit, that is like, please, 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 please. I was enjoying the holiday. Look at how I'm cheesing. Like, he got me a little flustered. Okay, Mali, Mali, Mali. <laughs> she realized I have a lot of names on this list and I don't want to talk forever, so I'm only gonna have two more. But I absolutely can make this a series because I literally only have like 12 people on this list and this isn't even like a quarter. Next, we have Tristan Kane from The Dark Verse. He is basically an assassin. 
He's been raised to like unalive people and be the most vicious person ever. And that was his intent with his girl, Miranda Vitalio. He was like, yeah, like I've been watching you for the past 10 years and I've been waiting for the right moment to come in there and cause some, some things just need to be done. She's like, excuse me? And they progress from there. Originally, she tries to attack him. Wait, so she's like this grade A hacker who is also the daughter of a mafia boss. This is a mafia romance, by the way, if you didn't know. I thought I wasn't a mafia girly, and now I just might be that. You know what I'm saying? At least honorary, at least honorary. But anyways, she tries to like hunt him down, and he's like, that's funny because I'm gonna unlike you. And she's like, <laughs> Okay, and they start there and the relationship progresses and then it gets a little romantic because they're both attracted to each other and circumstances happen where he actually feels a lot of sympathy for her and protection, like he really wants to protect her. And she's like, oh, what is this feeling? Oh, what is this feeling? And they get so close and they end up like obviously getting together and stuff like that. And it's so beautiful and the way he takes care of her. He has this thing where he washes her hair. He like drew her a bath. He was watching her tentatively. He's like, no one will ever get close to you ever again because something very traumatic happened in that scene but he loves her so selflessly and he doesn't think he deserves love so when he's being loved on by her he's like i'm sorry i deserve to be treated like a human being and i deserve love and respect that's crazy if i was in trouble i know he would come he would be here in 3.5 seconds because anytime she was in danger he was there he'd be like what's up oh okay my bad. <laughs> Last but not least on the list, we have Ivan Luca from, from Luca with Love. Let me tell you something about this book. It rewired my brain chemistry. It's everything to me. Like that book, I, I can't, I can't, oh. Ivan Lukov. he is so selfless when it comes to Jasmine. He's always loved her. He takes care of her when she is sick. That's one of my favorite book tropes to ever read about because it's hardly done and it's hardly done well, but in this book it was done perfectly. He was so tentative on her. He made sure she took her medicines on time. He made sure that she was, you know, like alive. He would literally sit in her bed. Mind you, these are professional ice skaters, okay? This is an ice skating romance. He would lay in her bed next to her, make sure she's good, check her if her fever breaks, all of that fun jazz. He would make her hot chocolate when she was sad. He would just have things around his house for her and she didn't even know that they were really friends. Like, girl, he's in love with you. She'd be like, oh, I don't know if he, babes. He's been plotting this for like a year. He loves you. And, and the thing is, he is her best friend's older brother. They've known each other since she was like four, ever since she entered the whole ice skating realm. It's just, I love him so much. I won't get too into it because I probably will do a video of my favorite books and this book will probably be on the list because I have dissected and reread it so much that it's almost like if you say a chapter name, I'll be like, oh, when did da -da 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 happen? Because it's like in my brain. Anyways, that is all for today. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Please follow me on all my other socials. I am pretty active on all of them. And if you guys want a part two, please let me know because I had a lot of fun talking about my man today and I don't mind doing it again. <laughs> I actually might do it again, regardless, because I mean, this was just a lot of fun, but thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Probably when you're not looking, you'll find someone who reads the same books or listens to the same music or likes to trash the same movies.